So, hello everyone. Today, what we are going to discuss is RSA algorithm. RSA algorithm is a cryptographic algorithm. Now, what do you mean by cryptography and what why is it required? Cryptography is all about converting the message into some unintelligible form. Now, why do you require it? In a network, when we are when two parties are communicating with each other, there are few uh, criteria that network should maintain as per the security requirements like confidentiality integrity authentication etc now by means of confidentiality we mean that the message whatever we are communicating should remain confidential between a and b any attacker c tries to get hold of message m also he should not be able to know what the message is by data integrity we mean that the message should not be modified while in transit, which means if A has sent a message M to B, it should reach as M to B and not as M dash. By means of authentication, B should know that if, if, if it receives a message from A, it should know that the message is from A and vice versa. Okay, So these are some of the conditions or security requirements of the network and to satisfy these requirements we use cryptographic techniques. RSA is a contribution from Rivest, Shamir and Edelman and it is a public key cryptographic system. So basically there are two types of cryptographic systems, secret key uh, uh, cryptographic systems and public key cryptographic systems. In secret key cryptographic systems, we use the same set of key or keys for encryption and decryption. Whereas in the case of public key cryptographic systems, we use a pair of key. One of the key is used for encryption, whereas other is used for decryption. Okay. So that is why it is called as an asymmetric cryptographic systems also. It is also known as asymmetric cryptographic system. And both the keys can be used interchangeably. Now, this is one of the, uh, it, it is found, uh, uh, this particular algorithm is found in MIT labs in 1977. And it is one of the best uh, known and widely used public key cryptographic systems. So here, what we do is we use the prime number is what we use very large prime numbers of 1024 bits or something is what we will be using. And um, it is based on the exponentiation in a finite field of integers. Modulo a prime. This is the prime principle that we are using. And the strength or security of the algorithm is uh, due to the fact that the the cost of factoring prime number is very very huge so if an attacker gets hold of the information also the he will be uh, he, it will take a lot of time for him to actually find out the two prime numbers and then to decrypt the uh, uh, message so this is where the strength of the algorithm lies now coming to the rsa algorithm the first step in rsa algorithm is to choose two prime numbers so let us name the prime numbers as p and q after that, we find the product of it. So we find the product as n is equal to p into q. Now we choose, we have to find modulo n. Uh, we, we have to find something called as, you know, the Euler's totian of uh, n we have to find, which I'm uh, writing it as z. And it is found out as p minus 1 into q minus 1. Basically, this z will give you the number uh, of uh, uh, numbers which are uh, co-prime with respect to n. So what do you mean by co-prime? Let me explain you. A number is said to be a co-prime of other number if the two numbers are not having any common factor other than one. So after finding these two information, we find a key E, which is the public key, which, but there is a condition in choosing that it should be relatively prime to z. It should be prime to z. Okay. So after choosing the public key, now it is our turn to find the private key. So how we have to find the private key in such a way that, okay, it has to satisfy this equation. That is d into e mod z should be equal to 1. Meaning d when multiplied by e and divided by z should give me the remainder as equal to 1. Once you do that step, you have got your public key and the private key. So your public key will be e comma n and the private key will be d comma n. Now, given any message m, you can do the encryption in this way where you will be getting the cipher c as equal to 
m to the power of e mod n. For decryption, what we do is, we do the reverse process. m is equal to c to the power of m is what we will get after the decryption process. So m is equal to c to the power of d mod n. Okay, and the public keys we will be getting will be e comma n, and the private key will be d comma n. Okay, so if I explain in this way algorithm, you will not be able to understand. So let us take a simple problem, and we will just explain this. So I am taking two prime numbers, p is equal to seven and q is equal to nineteen and two. Okay, now is it I am computing it as p minus one into q minus one. So I'll be getting it as six into eighteen, which is equal to one hundred and eight. I will get. Now, you have to choose a public key in such a way that it is relatively prime to Z. So, you take numbers from one to this one. You take one. We don't generally take. So, two and hundred and eight. If you see, they are having common factor. So, they are not relatively prime. Three and one zero eight. If you do also, we have common factor. Four also we cannot take. So, I am taking five and one zero eight. If we do, they don't have any common factor other than one. Okay. So after choosing e is equal to five, now we have to find d. So d how to find? D into mod, e mod z should be equal to one. Or in other words, I can say that d into e will be equal to k z plus one, where you can vary the k value and from one to n, uh, one to maximum you can go up till the n by two, and you can actually find out which value you will be getting it as uh, the proper. Way you'll be getting. So when we do this, you'll be getting d as equal to sixty-five. We'll get. Okay. So your public key is five comma one thirty-three, and your private key is sixty-five comma one thirty-three. These are the public and private keys. Now after doing this, we will do the encryption. Uh, uh, we, we will do the encryption part. So we will do the encryption part as c is equal to. M to the power of e mod n. So we have given m as equal to six. Correct. Now when we do the encryption part, what is the cipher that we are getting? Cipher we are getting is sixty-two. Okay. Now we can convert back the sixty-two uh, to the message m by applying the decryption part. C m is equal to c to the power of d mod n, or equal to sixty-two to the power of sixty-five mod one thirty three. I'll be getting. And you can get back the message m is equal to six. So this is how the algorithm works. Now some of the well-known attacks with respect to RSA are brute force attack, wherein the attacker has to try out all the combination, and it is definitely going to uh, cost him time. So uh, second part is mathematical attacks, and the third is timing attack. These are the possible attacks that uh, we know uh, as per RSA algorithm attacks. So these are something that um, this is uh, uh, one of the prominent algorithm which we are using. So you can think of this public key cryptographic system. An analogy I can give you is your email ID and the password. To whoever you want to communicate with, you will be giving your email ID, but you will keep the password to yourself. Same way, if I if I want somebody to message me, I'll be giving my public key information. I'll be publishing. Whereas a private key, I'll remain. I'll make it as confidential to myself. Okay. So these, this is how this particular algorithm works. Now I'll show you the uh, uh, execution of this. How to give the values and all. I'll show you. Okay. So over here, I'm just uh, uh, sharing another screen. My terminal screen. I'm sharing, and uh, you can see the execution of this particular algorithm. The it is very very straightforward kind of algorithm. Execution is very simple. Very, it's just statements only we are having. So, uh, now coming to this part, the execution part, I'm just giving RSA dot C. I've included math dot H. So when you are executing it, uh, uh, it is it is good enough to um, explicitly link to the math library because in uh, in math dot H there is a function called as P O W function. So we, in order to find the cipher, we'll be using m to the power of e. So you can write it as p o w of m comma e. When you are using the power function, you have to explicitly link to the math library while uh, you are executing. So because of that, I'm giving hyphen l m, meaning explicitly link to the math library. Now I'm just executing this part. Dot slash a dot out. 
So I'm giving small numbers as of now. Three and eleven, I'm giving both are prime numbers. You all know. I got uh, uh, z or phi is calculated as two into ten is equal to twenty. So I have to choose some number which is a co-prime, uh, uh, co-prime to twenty. Meaning they do, they should not use um, any. They should not have any common factor. So I cannot choose two. I can choose three. So I'm giving it as three. I get I get the public key and the private key uh, part uh, computed, right? And now I'm giving a message m is equal to two. You can see that it is computing the encrypted password or encrypted cipher as equal to eight. And after you know the decryption, you are getting the message m back as equal to two also. So this is how you'll be executing this particular algorithm. Okay. So thank you all. Uh,